Hello and welcome back YouTubers, I'm Brodo Mario, and I'm going to be talking about the handheld Steam machine that's going to be able to be pre-ordered for November 10th for $300. Now, $300 for a handheld gaming console seems like a lot of money. I mean, just take a look at the PS Vita, and you could get a 3DS, brand new, a new 3DS, for $200 and spend that extra $100 on a couple of games, since the 3DS has been out for a while. But this is what's going on with it. So it's been announced that there is something previously known as a Steam Boy that's going to be available for $299. It's going to ship out Q4 2016. So it's the first handheld console that's going to allow users to play Steam games on the go. They are promising that this will play more than a thousand games from Steam's library at launch. I do not like that because what they need to promise is that it will play all of your games. You just need to configure them. People who are going to be buying this are most likely going to be people who are PC gamers at heart anyways, so they're gonna be able to tamper with it anyways. If you look at the number of videos out on the internet right now about hacked PSPs and how to emulate on your PSP, you'll kinda understand that it's not difficult for the everyday person to figure this stuff out. They just need tutorials. It's very easy. So let's talk about the hardware spec. There's an AMD embedded G-Series SoC Step Eagle with Jaguar based CPU and GCN based Radeon graphics. Wow, that is a mouthful. Even for a guy like me who's technical and didn't know about this stuff, that's a lot, man. So it's kind of similar to the consoles. And I know that's probably going to be a dirty phrasing for any PC gamer, man. Oh, it's like a console? I don't want it. That's pretty much what's going to happen. Um, it has 4 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigs of internal memory and an SD card slot as USB 5 inch touchscreen with 720p resolution that's not good configurable tactile gamepads HDMI video output connection Wi-Fi connectivity Bluetooth connectivity and the 4g mobile network connectivity and that's the pro model only now I, I seem to remember Sony doing something about that too okay so here's the problem now they they are very stupid. I'm, I'm sorry, they are. I'm sorry. But you need to package the 4G mobile network connectivity in with the base model. That just hands down. You need to get rid of the, the Wi-Fi only. I'm sorry. I'm sure a lot of people won't like that, but you're just gonna have to. Because in this day and age, when you're rolling around, when you're on the train, when you're driving down state to visit your father or visit your in-laws, or when you're going to school on your bus, there's not gonna be Wi-Fi. There's not gonna be Bluetooth accessible internet. And that connection isn't going to be readily available either. It's not going to be a good connection. So even if you do go to a place with Wi-Fi, you know, if you go to your college, it might only be 10, 10 down, you know, one up. And that's just not enough to play some games at a very good low latency pace. So you need that 4G mobile network to be standard. And you need to be able to set up a service where you can use that 4G network for a low-end price, just like Xbox Live, just like uh, PlayStation Network, and you need to be able to connect to that service easily, say for five, ten dollars a month, okay? You prepay for a card, fifty dollars a year, you can play your PC games anywhere you want. This is what needs to happen, otherwise, smartphones are gonna just dominate it. You tell me right now, if you have a smartphone, okay, it has tons of games on it, you have emulators, you can play Pokemon, Super Mario World, whatever you want on it, you're telling me right now? you're gonna drop 300 on this that's that's just the base model let's say $400 for the 4g unit $400 and you're gonna carry this around and your smartphone around okay so why okay you would literally have to be somewhere for a long time not be able to come home and have to stay there for a while to actually get any use out of this. And the screen itself is not even as good as many smartphones. I'm sorry, it's just not. It's nice that it has 32 gigabytes internal memory with an SD card slot because it's very similar to the Wii U Deluxe. However, many Steam-based games are very, very big. You know, you install, let's say you get Black Ops 3, that's it, it's taken up. Sorry, it's like literally no room. You'd have to get the SD card instantly. And because it only supports SD card storage, I mean, there's no way you can strap an SD, um, not an SD, a, uh, a flash 
hard drive to it. There's no way you can put a solid state drive to it. And there's no way you could put a standard hard drive on it. You're limited to how much you're willing to spend on an SD card, which 128 gigabyte SD card isn't that expensive. It's like 30, 40 dollars, but that's a, a, a lot of money to have to spend on something that you could have gotten the equal amount of pricing for, let's say, a terabyte hard drive. And now you're limiting yourself to one tenth of what you would get for the same amount of money. And it's disappointing and upsetting just because you need it in the SD card format. So the four gigabytes of RAM, pretty decent. I mean, maybe there's gonna be some small problems with that, but usually that's not an issue. And the CPU will probably be what's going to cause issues, but because you can't run games at 1080p, I don't think this will be an issue. See, even though the 720p resolution screen is very okay, um, the CPU is going to be the limiting factor here. So you're not going to be able to drive 1080p with that CPU very easily. You know, you would have a 30 frame second experience, but at 720p resolution, now you're sitting at 60 frames a second and it looks really nice. So that's really good. Now there's HDMI video out, but I honestly don't know who the hell would use this to put video out, especially if you're at home. Guys, come on, okay? If you're at home, what, why would you put the video out? Yes, maybe you would take it to a friend's, but again, if your friend has an anywhere decent computer, he could probably run most of the games. And yeah, I, I just, I don't see that being the most, uh, a able type of thing to put on there. You have USB also, and I, I suppose that might be for like charging the battery or something, but I, I don't know. So what it comes down to is this mobile gaming platform. One, it needs to have the 4G so you can use it everywhere you go. Not just on Wi-Fi hotspots, okay? That's great, but the only people who get a use out of that is people who are at school and they have to wait for classes. Because if you work a job and you have some downtime, you're not gonna fire this bad boy up. You're either going to be doing something on your downtime or you're probably eating or on a break or something. And you just don't have time to sit here. Oh, let me connect, oh, here we go, you know? Um, and those individuals who are going to be taking this to standard schools probably won't have the uh, very high speed internet to use to have a streamlined experience. So that needs to be put in there. Um, there needs to be better memory because good Lord, man, the only way I could see the memory working out is if you could stream from the cloud. So let's say you could connect to a cloud cloud service over on Steam and connect to your computer, keep it on, and stream your games from your computer to this device. But they didn't say anything about that yet. Yeah. So, uh, I, I don't know about that. And that's about it. That's about all I have to say for it. It seems like an interesting device, but these devices fail because most of the time you don't want to be playing a scaled down version of the game that you could be playing at home when you're off work, when you have time to play it. This device would seem like it would only succeed when you're on vacation or when your parents are on the TV or computer and you want to play your game and you can't. And that's about it. Well, that's about all I have to say about it. Ladies and gentlemen, leave me a comment in the section below if you feel the same or if you think I am totally wrong. I don't care either way, just let me know down in the section below. And I've been your host, Proto Mario, and I'm signing out. Good gaming, and God bless. And now, the important decision of joining the Maverick Rebellion. We are a tight group of individuals who rebel against stereotypes and greater evils that are commonly accepted. ISPs, children being conned out of games, sexism in video games, enough is enough. And the Mavericks have had it. If you choose to subscribe, or stay subscribed, you are joining the fight against injustice by watching my numerous video topics. From net neutrality to publishers covering up botched releases, Releases. The Mavericks are always informed on the issues plaguing your gaming experience today. So don't be left out in the cold, and don't let those people keep you down. Join the Maverick Rebellion today and become a member of the community that will listen and engage with you. What are you waiting for? Just click subscribe and you'll be in good company. Mavericks unite!